It's GED question of the daytime, guys, and I am so far behind. I think this post is almost a month old, but I'm going to work on getting caught up a little bit this afternoon. So let's take a look at this problem here. It says simplify. We haven't been given much direction. Do remember that all simplify means is um, that you're going to perform the indicated operations. You're basically going to obey the um, operation, mathematical operations that you see here now. Um, I see a few operations in this problem. There's some really familiar ones that we're way used to, uh, like addition. There's and subtraction. We're way used to those. There's some operations that maybe are a little trickier, uh, like I see this floating number that's known as an exponent. If you've never um, done exponents before, I would want to stop this video right now. Go take a look at one of the older exponent videos and check that out. And I see another operation. These bars, up and down bars, are absolute value. Um, absolute value bars. So I have a few things going on here. And whenever you have an expression, a mathematical expression, with more than one thing to do, you know what you need to bust out? The order of operations. The order of operations. So let's go ahead and just get this marking off here. And I would just remind you that there are four steps to the order of operations. And this is absolutely the rule for simplifying. You always work and do your groupings first, inner groupings to outer groupings, if there's more than one. So we start with our groupings. Uh, then from there, we move on to our exponents. And of course, remember that exponents include both the uh, little floating powers and their inverse the roots. Then we have addition and its inverse. Uh, you always do an operation with its inverse. So what's the, as the same step as its inverse, I'm sorry. So the inverse of addition is subtraction. And then of course our, oh, I screwed up. Do you guys see how I screwed up? Y'all will screw up too. So I could stop the video and do a new one, but I won't because Y'all can know that I'm a human person who screws up. Probably already you've written me a nasty comment on this video and thrown it away. But the step after exponents is not addition. Addition's what we do last. What was I thinking? It's multiplication. And it's inverse. There we go. So multiplication and it's inverse, which is, of course, division are the third step. And then finally, I knew that, you knew that, we all knew that. The final and last step is addition and it's inverse, subtraction. Okay, so wonderful. Four steps to the order of operations. So let's go ahead and start working through these. I'm going to look for any groupings first, and I sure do see a grouping. And this is why I don't teach PEMDAS or that the first step is parentheses because there's lots of types of groups. Anytime you see something go inside, basically, we end up with a group. And I do see a grouping. I see a grouping inside my absolute value bars. And so I am going to go ahead and deal with that grouping right now. So I'm going to do the problem 2 minus 5. Now, 2 minus 5, if I only have $2, but then I go and spend $5, I'm going to end up in the hole. I'm going to be negative $3. Now, whenever you do an order of operations problem, you should drop down whatever you have left. So I'm going to drop down my absolute value bars. I'm going to drop down my plus. And I could actually go ahead and do some more of this problem right here on this step, but I'm just going to drop it down for right now, keep it nice and clean. So I did my groupings. Okay. Uh, next thing I should do is I should go ahead and take care of my exponents. But there's actually a little trick to the exponent in this problem that I have to tell you. Even though it looks like this is the number negative five squared, exponents are really, really weak. This two here is only working on this five. It's kind of like there's two things happening to this five. It's being squared, but it's also getting multiplied by a negative one. Minus five or negative five is like negative one times five. And so what it's very important that you square that five before you deal with the minus sign um, because exponents come before multiplication. So I'm going to do 5 squared. 5 squared is 25. Hope that makes sense. 5 squared is 25. Now I'm going to drop down everything I haven't used yet. I haven't used my minus. I haven't used this plus. 
Um, I'm also going to do this absolute value of negative 3 right now. Now you might say, Kate, absolute value isn't included in any one of this op these operations. No, but here's what I do know. Right now this negative 3 is being separated by this from the rest of this problem using these absolute value bars. It's important that we deal with them before we're going to be able to put it together with the other numbers. And so it's held apart here. And so let's go ahead and do this problem. The absolute value, or I should say simplify this part of the expression, the absolute value of negative 3. Remember that absolute value is defined as a number's distance from 0 on the number line. Distance from 0 on the number line. So how far away is negative 3 from 0 on the number line? Of course, it's just 3 away. And one thing you might notice about absolute value is it basically just turns its insides positive. <laughs> because distance is always positive, it's defined as distance, and what happens is that negative 3 just turns into a positive. Okay, so great, we're almost done with this problem now. We just have negative 25 plus 3. So if I was $25 in debt, and I went ahead and paid off $3 of that, I went up uh, by $3, I would end up just being $22 in debt. My debt would actually go down if I paid on it. Okay, and so that is your final answer, negative 22. This is about as tricky as order of operations problems get. There's a lot going on here. You've got to have a lot of prerequisite skills. So again, you know, you might have to go back and review exponents or um, what happens when you put an exponent on a negative number. You might need to go back and review the concept of absolute value or the concept of adding and subtracting negatives in order for this to make sense to you. But if you have any questions about this problem, be sure that you ask them in the comments.